There's been no sign of a sale, not even an offer. When you're selling, you want everything to look the best it possibly can. I think this house is going to be a real challenge. Nothing is wrong in this house. It's good to be house proud, but when you're trying to make a sale, it's better to be house savvy. You've got to take a cold, hard look at how much your house is worth, how it's presented, and how best you can position it on the market for a quick sale. My job is to help people do that and turn unsellable houses into dazzling sellers. At $580,000, this semi-detached house is listed as a condo alternative. It's 1,600 square feet, has four bedrooms, eaten kitchen and a finished basement. It's been on the market for six weeks. The homeowners Marco and Maria have had no offers. They want to sell this place and put the cash into travel and retirement, but their dreams are on hold, so my job is to sell this house. Soon to be empty nesters, Maria and Marco have four children, but only one is left at home, their youngest son, Chris. We're living here for many years. Always good memories, good friends, good, good relationships with the neighbors, for friends, for family, for everything. But now they're proud grandparents and want to live closer to their grown-up kids. The house is a big one for us. We decided to sell the house. They want to buy a smaller home and use the rest of the money to travel. We take a vacation last year, but just only for visiting the family. Close to retirement, they're anxious to start a new chapter in their lives. But Maria and Marco haven't quite realized that in order to sell their house, they have to get to work. Nothing wrong in my house. That's why I live a long time here. That's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Maria and Marco's house is in an up-and-coming neighborhood minutes from downtown. It once drew a mix of multicultural families, but is now favored by young professionals. Semi-detached properties like Maria and Marco's run upwards of $600,000 and usually sell within two weeks. But these homes are now competing against trendy new lofts that sell in the same price range. So the realtor has listed this house as a condo alternative. From the outside, this house looks pretty appealing, but it hasn't received a single offer. I need to get inside and find out why. Mudrooms are the first glimpse you get of a house, so they're important. You've got a patchwork of old carpets, a park bench, fridge with a doily on it. I'm kind of nervous about walking into the rest of the house now. This house is so sort of textbook how not to present your house for sale. You should declutter and take down any religious iconography. Now, I can see cherubs. There's a lot of family photographs, and they're not small either. Buyers won't be able to imagine themselves living in this property. See, look at this. That's an original stained glass window, but you can't see it because it's behind not one, but two sets of sort of lace curtains. Not a bad size kitchen. You've got quite a lot of prep space, but then there's all this clutter on it. Look at that cabinet. You shouldn't have it in a kitchen when they're trying to sell. There's definitely some potential in this kitchen. There's something to work with. That is very strange. They've astroturfed their patio. I thought astroturf was just for sporting arenas, but apparently not which is a shame, because this is actually quite a nice backyard. And it could definitely set this house apart from a condo. It's not a bad size. But then you've got this badly cladded shed. This is not in a good nick at all. It looks like it's been attacked by numerous dogs. And again, there's clutter even outside. And it's not a bad idea to tidy away laundry before buyers come round. This is actually the best room in the house. It could do with a declutter, but I feel quite cheered by this room. The real estate agent is billing this property as a condo alternative, and it's not. 
The front and back yard are in a bad state of repair, which is always a deterrent to buyers. The inside is claustrophobic because there's too much furniture, religious iconography, fake flowers, family portraits. And if we're going to get this house sold, we have a lot of work to do. Marco and Maria have got to listen to my advice if they don't want to be stuck in this house forever. Marco, Maria, this house has been on the market for six weeks. I think it's a great house. It's, it's nice and big. It's in a great part of town, nice, quiet street. It's got a lot going for it. But take the sitting room here. You've got a lot of furniture, which makes the room feel a bit small. Yeah. Because when you're selling your house, what you want to do is make it feel really big, big. and really bright. Good idea. Right, right. So easy to sell. One thing that buyers really like is hardwood floor, but you're covering it up with all the rugs. Sometimes in the winter, it gets cold. It's cold. Yeah. You know, people, when they come and see the house, they put carpet, say maybe something, the floor is damaged. That's why it's covered. But yeah. no, no, 100% is perfect, you know. Which is fantastic for us, because it means yes. when we <laughs> take this carpet up, it's going to have a beautiful floor underneath. Oh, OK. Usually I'd say to people when they're selling their house to kind of remove some of the religious art because you want to make the house appeal to the broadest range of people possible. No, it's fine. It's not, I don't mind. I take okay. it. I went into the backyard and I looked and I was like, why have they put carpet in the backyard? Because my grandson. Ooh. Because... <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> I think you've got a good backyard, but I'd like to put some plants out. I have years ago. Yeah. You know what happened? Too many raccoons. Sometimes <laughs> raccoons are coming in. Never again. But when you're selling, you want everything to look the best it possibly can. I, I have time. You have time. Well, I think we should get started then. Houses in this up-and-coming downtown neighbourhood are usually on the market for about 10 days. But for Marco and Maria, it's been six weeks. There's been no sign of a sale, not even an offer. So I need to go and speak to their real estate agent and to ask him what he thinks is going wrong. Eusebio, this house has been on the market for six weeks. Why do you think that is? Well, the house needed uh, a little bit of work. Yeah. And uh, the owners were uh, actually quite happy with the house. They just think that the area should sell it itself. At whatever cost. Exactly. Today's buyer is conscientious. They know what they're looking for and they want the value for their money. Who do you think is most likely going to buy the house? It's become a very trendy area over the last few years, so we're getting a lot of the young professionals, young families coming in. It's just a better alternative to going into a condo with no space. How many viewings have you had, open houses? We've had two. We've had one open house and we've probably had about uh, 17 to 18 viewings. We have it listed on the, on the MLS, yep. and I've had flyers distributed around, uh -huh. around the area. What did you feel when you first walked into the house? Definitely a very dated home, mm -hmm. but uh, he's, it's an old, older family who uh, are set in their ways. How are you going to persuade people who would be going towards a condo to go towards a slightly down at heel house? At the, the price for a 600 square foot condo, Spending a little more on renovations, you're going to have a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half-story home. Unfortunately, the price tag doesn't give you that renovation budget. I believe in your square footage and uh, as an investment. You may spend the money on the renovation in order to get what you're expecting from the condo, but definitely in the long run, you're going to be way ahead of the game. Now, are you going to take new photographs once we've done our renovation work? Yes, I will, and I'll have them up on the website and hopefully we'll get it sold. Great, thank you. I'm going to show Maria and Marco what buyers look for in a home. This one in their neighborhood sold in just eight days for full asking price. Wow. Maria, come this way, Marco. Yeah. There's a lot of things about this house I like, mm -hmm. and I think that they would look good in your house. So what do you notice first? The floor. Yeah. I think it opens the room up makes the room look bigger. Not too much furniture. It's quite neutral. Yeah. When you walked in, your first reaction was, wow. It works on That's you, Maria. Marco, not so much. 
It's in immaculate condition and move-in ready. There's no personal photographs. So anyone can imagine moving in, and that's what we're trying to achieve in your house. That's what sells. Well, look at nice. Come on through to the kitchen. Wow. They're practically identical to your kitchen cupboards. Yeah. Almost close. Almost, Almost close. Almost close, yeah. So it just shows you don't need a brand new kitchen. You need to show off as much prep space as, as possible. Mm -hmm. When you're selling your house, you want it to look bigger and brighter. The two most yes. important things. But come and have a look at the backyard. Obviously, it's a different kind of yard. This one's got a lot more lawn than yours. I want to make your backyard have more plants, more colour. Hopefully, the raccoons won't touch the... <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the flowers alone for the next couple of weeks. Now, did you like this house? Yeah, I like it. It's more light. Mm -hmm. uh, they look at more big ones. Yeah, and that's what people are looking for. And I know that's what people want, because this house sold for 100% of the asking price in eight days. How long this house uh, for sale? Eight days. No, eight but days. The, the, the beginning. After, from the beginning to the yeah, end, yeah. eight days. Mm -hmm. The way you present a house has a big impact. It's not just about location and price, it's also about presentation. It's presentation to the house. Yeah. So are you ready to go back and start doing some work on the house? Sure. OK, yeah. then come on. Yeah. To change Maria and Marco's house into a true condo alternative, our general contractor, Anthony Sayers, is on the scene. Marco and Maria, you have a good, solid house that's well-maintained, but there are some improvements I want to make to it. I'd like to make this patio more of a feature, put some planters up, make it look really pretty. And are you going to sort these this out? Yeah, we can fix this up a little bit, paint it. Make some window boxes? Yeah, make some window boxes, some Brilliant. planters. The shed. We can remove all the, the shingles and reface it. So it's going to look really jolly out here, lots of planters. I want the mudroom to look really, really snazzy as soon as you walk in, so okay. I want to take the carpet up. Are you happy with us taking the carpet up in the mudroom? I'll give it permission. OK, you give me permission. Thank you, Marco. <laughs> so, Marco and Maria, what do you feel about these changes? Are you nervous, excited? No, I'm not yeah. nervous. You know, I I'm want to see... a little bit nervous, but I'm more excited. OK, then, come on, then. OK. Excellent. Maria and Marco have to remove 23 years of clutter. The good news is that decluttering before buyers come round will not only help the sale, but also save them packing up on moving day. But Marco still needs some convincing that all this is a good idea. When I buy the house, the owner before me, he don't move it maybe one piece of finger. What I have to do? This period always feels hard when you're moving stuff, but it will make a difference. Hopefully you'll get it sold. This is a surprise for me. Marco and Maria's retirement plans have been put on hold as they haven't had one offer in the six weeks their home has been on the market. We've got three days before the open house, so we're starting in the backyard. Talk about quick work. The carpet's gone up and you've taken all the shingle off. Yeah, they were just held on by roofing nails. Right. It's typical. Um, cleaned all the nails. I've got this pressure-treated one-by material. Yep. I was going to take it and just line the, the whole shed with it around the door, mm -hmm. right at the top, um, just like that. And once we strip that other side, we'll do the same. And then we'll just paint it all out. But uh, apparently there's lots of nails on the floor, yeah, so I thought I might start sweeping them up. OK, safety first. That's good. We'll clean yeah. it all up, and then we'll get back to work. How's that? Now, time to add more green space. So I'm building a planter box. What I've done is I've made up two frames, one front and one back. Uh, I've attached the back frame to the fence, and I've attached the front frame to the other frame just using some 2 by 4s and some screws. We're going to make a base that will hold the dirt in, and then we'll clad the sides with some plywood there and this side. We can line it with plastic after. So this is the front facing. We're going to clad it with some plywood, and then afterwards take some trim and make full panels on the front of, of the box. We're gonna paint to match with the same color scheme that's going on on the shed, and it's gonna be like an oasis in the backyard. 
Meanwhile, we're tackling the inside with some fresh paint. The mudroom looks so much better already, and it's actually going to be a good first impression. Now the mudroom's ready for a new carpet. So what I've done is I just put double-sided tape. So if you actually take the tape off, right. just pull the tape, and then once you pull the tape to pass where the carpet's going to go, we'll start sticking it from that corner. Never done this before. Well, I'm here to help you. I'll pull it, you just jump, okay? okay. Ready? One, one two, two, three. three. Oh, no! I, I didn't do it. Okay, okay. ready? One, one two, two, three. three. Go. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, now we can just continue keeping it. Just stick it there and then I'll guide it to where it's got to go. Oh, look at that. And then it's the same in this corner. Who knew laying carpet could be so easy? <laughs> Okay, so there, right. we have a square edge now. We have a square and edge. And now we can just keep everything coming this way. We got rid of the black table and chairs because they didn't really go with the kitchen and instead we've got this island. What I'm doing is just staining it with some water-based stainer so it matches these, this sort of darker, wood style here and just pour a little on like that and then use a roller. Just gives it a bit of a richer, darker tone. This is a bit blonde. This island is great because you can sit at it but you can also use it as extra prep space. And you don't need a big table in here because you've got the dining room table right next door. The makeover's almost complete. These finishing touches impress young professionals looking for a condo alternative. If you've got a window between two rooms, leave it uncovered, let the light in, and both rooms will benefit. Green is in, but don't just stick to flowers. Some fresh herbs by the kitchen will get buyers thinking of snipping, cooking, and dining. You might have everything from a pasta maker to a bread maker, but put them away and keep your countertops clear. Now that this house is sleek and modern, will buyers finally be wowed? Marco and Maria's house used to be filled with personal items and overcrowded with furniture. But by painting, decluttering, adding new window treatments and accessories, this home feels really warm and inviting. Buyers felt let down in the living room. But after a major clean-out, we've revamped the old sofas using modern coverlets, allowing the wood floors to breathe, generates light and space. We've painted a soft and luxurious green on the walls. Chic, contemporary lighting finishes off the changes needed to catch a buyer ready to upsize. Maria and Marco's kitchen wasn't shown to its best potential. Now the countertops have been exposed, fresh neutral paint opens up the room, a modern butcher block bar with matching stools can be used for eating and working. Contemporary accessories add to the transformation from dowdy to an urban functional space. The mudroom made the worst first impression. So we've decluttered, painted the walls in an updated colour, added a well-placed bench and laid down a fresh inviting carpet. The backyard was definitely not back to nature. We've ripped up some nasty AstroTurf and added some chairs and an area rug to make it feel like a patio again. We've painted the shed and added wood detailing and built a planter to match. Now this yard is much more of an oasis than urbanites expect. We took Maria and Marco's home from the past to the present. After a massive declutter and modernization, their home now shows its best-selling features. If you have an open plan living and dining room, paint the walls the same colour. It will increase a sense of space and create a better flow. Don't worry about underpricing your house. If you price your house low, you should receive multiple offers which will push the price up to market value or above. When you're selling your home, it's important to disassociate yourself from it. Think of it as a product that you're trying to sell like any other, and that will make it easier to remove personal mementos, oversized furniture, and create a neutral space. Marco didn't get why he was made to declutter, so has he changed his mind? Nice, clean, clear. What the? Oh, plastic cape, I mean, you. 
Oh my God. It's beautiful. <laughs> the house now is beautiful. I love it. I love it, this place, especially my kitchen. Their real estate agent is here for the sales test. Wow, <laughs> it doesn't even look like the same place. I know. This is a nice oasis in the city. From a real estate point of view, how has our makeover helped change the likelihood of a sale? Well, it's greatly improved the likelihood. We now have those sleek lines that we're looking for in, uh, mm. in the condo that usually we don't see yeah. in a home. And uh, what you guys have done, it's fantastic. I can't believe it. Good news. But will potential buyers have the same reaction? What are you looking for? Is this for you, for someone else? Actually, I was here three weeks ago with one of my clients. Uh huh. From the first time I was here to now, it looks completely different. Good. Good. Come outside. Good. Come on. Good. Now you've seen it, do you think you might have other clients it might be good for? Oh, definitely. We work in the area. We will bring in other clients through. Here we have the kitchen. Nice and bright. It's got plenty of counter space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Will you be ringing up your wife on the way home and saying, I've seen this fantastic house. Should we go and have a look at it? Definitely. I mean, the house is perfect. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's roomy. With our furniture, we can make this home. Marco and Maria's house used to be multicolored and cluttered. And now it's sleek and serene. And they're one step closer to realizing their retirement dreams. After the Unsellables team left, the number of viewings of Marco and Maria's house increased dramatically. This house is unsellable no more. If your house isn't selling, the trick is knowing why not. And you are probably not the most impartial judge. You might think it's perfect, but buyers vote with their wallets. My job is to bring these two worlds together and turn your unsellable house into an irresistible hit. This 1,800-square-foot home, listed at $679,000, it has five bedrooms, an eating kitchen, and a separate basement apartment. It's been on the market for four months, and the homeowners, the Rochers, haven't received a single offer. Now, they're a close-knit, multi-generational family, but they've decided to go their separate ways. But they're stuck until they sell this house. Mike lives with his parents, Mario and Lourdes his sister Judy and her two kids, Sophia and Pedro. They're a pretty busy bunch. Within the last four years, we've opened a family restaurant and uh, we spend most of our days and times there. For eight years, they've all been living together, but they're now looking for a change. So Mike's parents asked him to be in charge of the sale. My mom and dad have decided they definitely need a smaller home, such as a bungalow. Shame. My sister was certainly moving on with her kids and I'm also getting married. I've been with my fiance for eight years and I definitely need the sale of this house to finance my, my wedding. But Mike isn't doing everything he can to get a sale. My real estate agent did suggest an open house. However, I don't like open houses because the only persons that usually come to see the open house is your neighbor. Even with no open houses, Mike still thought it would have been snapped up by now. To be honest, I don't know why it's not selling. It should be selling. If I don't sell this house, I feel like my life's just gonna be on hold. I definitely need the money. The Rocha's detached house is located on a main street in a fast-growing neighborhood, 20 minutes northwest of town. Houses this size sell in 10 days for around half a million dollars. Listed at 679,000, this house is priced well above the average. There have only been eight showings and no offers. So why hasn't this family received multiple offers? I'm going to go inside and find out. The exterior of this house has a distinctly European feel, which might not be everyone's cup of tea. The white railings, the flagstones, the profusion of plants. The pots everywhere are a bit messy, though. Well, this lantern is overkill. It is much too big for the size of the house. These sofas are far too big for the room. It's not a bad size sitting room, but look, they're huge. I mean, that one over there is a monster. And the electric fire is not even flush to the wall. And why would you cover the windows in really, really heavy drapes? You want to let the light in. Hmm. Not really a fan of the doily tablecloth. <gasps> 
and never, ever, ever leave the plastic on chairs or sofas. There's far too much stuff in a small space. The first thing you should do when you're trying to sell your house is declutter, because all these personal knickknacks, A, make the space look smaller, and B, it's very, very distracting for the buyer. They can't imagine themselves living here. Ah, oh, nice new kitchen. <gasps> they haven't taken the plastic off the dishwasher which is particularly weird because it has a red sheen and it totally clashes with the cherry-style cabinets. Again, the crocheted tablecloths. I'm not a fan. They look like giant doilies. Just get rid of them. And look, stains like this, not good, especially in a kitchen. The one thing buyers demand, clean kitchens. Well, let's just hope the upstairs is a bit better. Bathroom, hmm, live wires. Buyers perceive this house as unsafe when they see unfinished DIY like this. Oh, look at those dirty, dusty lights. And you've got old grouting. Doesn't exactly say safe and clean, does it? Oh, not too bad, tidy and clean. Hmm, another good bedroom. Another good bedroom. Maybe I won't have very much work to do upstairs, which would be nice. Where to start with this room? The furniture is too big and too dark. And having access to an outdoor space is a huge selling feature. But I'm going to see if I can actually get out of this bedroom through the door. So show it off, don't lock it off. <laughs> Why? Mike wants top dollar for this house. It's listed at $679,000, which makes it more expensive than any comparable house in the neighborhood. So you'd think it would beat the pants off the competition, but it doesn't. The furniture is so big, it makes the rooms feel small. And it's so cluttered that it's difficult to even get out of the door. But hopefully, I can get Mike to reduce the asking price. Mike, you said you wanted to sell because you're planning a wedding? Correct. When are you getting married? Well, hopefully the sooner I, I sell the house, the sooner I can start planning my wedding. Do you have one impatient bride on your hands? I try to have that in control. <laughs> so, you really, really need to sell this house. Definitely. We're going to have to really seriously consider dropping the asking price. I think we initially came up with that figure just to really see uh, if we would get any hits with the house. What you're doing by pricing it so high is you're really reducing the flow of traffic through the house. Basically, the more people who see this house, the quicker it's going to get sold. Which is why I was slightly surprised by the decision not to do open houses. At what? Why was that? My initial thought on open houses, I, I never agreed on, mm -hmm. just because I, I didn't think it would ever work, okay. mainly being only neighbors coming in to see the house versus potential buyers. Yeah. And what were your real estate agent's views on that? Did she want to do a, an open house? She did highly recommend an open house, okay. but again, she went with my suggestion of okay. not doing one. Because this is a great house. It's got lots of bedrooms. It's got a lot going for it, but you've got a lot of big furniture. Mm -hmm. It can make the room feel smaller. So we might have to pare that down a bit. One of the most important things to do when you're selling your house is to declutter. And I don't think anyone needs two cake stands on the one dining room table. Empty. Empty cake stands. No, the kitchen's fantastic. It's nice and clean. Um, have you ever used your dishwasher? No. No. That's why the, the plastic's still on. Yes. <laughs> Which did make me laugh. Now, upstairs in the master bedroom, I can barely get out onto the porch because there's so much clutter there. And that's a selling feature. Right. So you want to make it easy for buyers to be able to see outside. OK. So, Mike, are you prepared to make the changes necessary to get this house sold? If it means selling my house, absolutely. <laughs> Houses in this hot downtown market usually go in a matter of weeks. The Rochers haven't been so lucky. The house has been on the market for four months and they haven't got a single offer. So I'm going to go and speak to Maria, their real estate agent, and find out why. Maria, this house has been on the market four months. Why is it not selling? It's overpriced. Um, it's, it's definitely a big house. It's a great house, but uh, they have oversized furniture. Mm -hmm. 
It needs to be the clutter. I'm glad you mentioned the price, because 679, I walked into the house and I couldn't see that it could possibly justify that price. I mean, have you told Mike it's overpriced? I did, and I'm really working hard on them to uh -huh. bring them down. Because if you say to him, Mike, the longer it sits on the market at this price, the more stale the listing becomes. Definitely. Maria, apart from price, what other feedback have you had from buyers? The house too small, mm -hmm. which I don't think it's too small. No. It's a five-bedroom home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too personalized. They have all their lifestyle in their house. Have you told all this to Mike? I had talked to Mike and to the, the mother as mm -hmm. well. Uh, that they postpone everything that I tell them. Yeah. They keep on postponing it mm -hmm. and never gets done. Yeah. In the photographs on the property listing, there is no clutter. I mean, what happened? I removed uh, the stuff where I had to take the pictures, yes. I removed the stuff away. Yeah. And then put it back. But I could not put it in boxes myself. No, it's in not order your to job take to the do pictures that. Yeah. to show on the computer because that's on the internet, that's what people go by the pictures. Yeah. When we're finished, what are you gonna do to market the house? First I'm gonna have new pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm aiming for a new price. Yeah. And of course a public open house right on the next weekend. Fantastic. Maria, thank you so much. I'm really excited thank about you. you coming back to see it. So it's been confirmed, Mike hasn't been listening to the experts. He needs to see what buyers want. So I'm showing him a house of the same size in the same area that sold in a week for $10,000 over asking. What do you like about this room? It's definitely not cluttered. Uh -huh. Look at the light. Mm -hmm. They haven't obscured all the windows with drapes and net curtains, so the light really comes in. And I think that is one of the most important things when you're showing a house, is to let the light in. The furniture is the perfect size for the room. It doesn't dominate. Come through to the kitchen. Three things about this kitchen. Clean, decluttered and modern. Now, you've got a pretty swanky kitchen, but all we've got to do is let the light in and declutter a bit. OK. Well, this kitchen shows a lot of light. Mm. Now, come and have a look at the master bedroom. <sighs> this is a very nice large room. It is. It's beautiful. Now, obviously, it's much bigger than your master bedroom, but yes. what I think it shows is just nice, bright walls and limited furniture. The problem in that room is one of the best-selling features is the patio, but you can't get out to the patio. It's like an obstacle course, and you need to declutter, and you just want to make rooms look bigger and brighter. Now, I know this house was successful with potential buyers, because it sold for $10,000 over asking price in a week. Oh, wow. That's a fast turnaround. That is a fast turnaround. Now, what we need to do with your house, we need to declutter, we need to remove some of the furniture, we need to make it brighter, and we need to seriously consider reducing the asking price. Definitely. If we do all those things, I really believe that your house has a good chance of selling. So, are you ready to go back? Absolutely. OK, yes. brilliant. Our general contractor, Anthony says, is on scene to make Mike's house one step ahead of the competition. OK, Mike, now your yes. house has good bones, but I think this area here lacks a bit of warmth and a sort of visual anchor. So what I'd like to do is replace the electric fire, which, let's face it, isn't doing a huge amount, okay. and maybe put a built-in TV unit, which will kind of act as a focal point. Now, is that going to be a bad job, Anthony? We could do that and build a unit there and probably put some lights in it. That would be fantastic, because this area is slightly dark, and I think that's also because of the drapes, which we'll, okay. we will be removing. Nice. Now, talking about lights. Yes, talking about the lights. Um, we just need to change the light on the front porch, right? It's a little big for okay. what's there. I want you to fix the light, but also in the bathroom, I want to fix the grouting. Is that possible? Do you have to retile? Um, no, it's pretty straightforward but it can be a bit of a mess if you don't know what you're doing, so... We'll yeah. I would have no <laughs> idea where to start. So upstairs, we'll do okay. the grouting. That will make the bathroom look a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Downstairs, we'll add a wall unit, create a focal point. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. But we've got a lot of work to do, so let's not stand around. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's not true that buyers can see past clutter. To get a sale, don't put off work that needs to be done before you list your home. Getting rid of oversized furniture and adding updated colours to walls gives the impression of larger and brighter spaces. And what does Mike think so far? 
The changes are coming great. The room seems a lot lighter. And I'm excited to see the outcome. The Roche's home has been on the market for four months, so Mike's dream to use the proceeds to get married is stalled. They've had only eight showings and no offers. We've got just three days before the open house. You taken down the giant lamp? <laughs> yeah. You know, I've seen castles in England with smaller exterior lights than that. It's just complete overkill. Look how nice that looks, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was very smart. Give us a shout. OK, I will. Ah, oh, I've been wanting to do that since I walked in the house. What do you think? It's very nice. It brings a lot of light into the room. Well, that's what I thought when I first walked into the house. The three things I thought were it's dark and it's small. And that was because the oversized furniture, well, we've got rid of one of the sofas. Then the drapes, you couldn't see through them. They were so dark. Right. And then look at this beautiful blue colour. It just opens the room up. And he matches the curtains. I know. When the house is transformed, bright, light, fantastic, five-bedroom house, are you going to have some open houses? I'm looking forward to the feedback that I'm going to receive, definitely. With the painting complete and the curtains hung, building extra storage space puts value back into the house. The unit also makes a great first impression, drawing buyers further into the room. Meanwhile, in the bathroom upstairs, so what I'm doing is I'm carefully removing any old caulking. I've made sure that no one used the actual tub for two days, because you need it to be dry for at least 48 hours before you can go ahead and silicone. So I'll be able to re-caulk it right away. And what I'm going to do now is, with some warm water and my finger, I would let this sit for probably 48 hours before you use the tub again. The makeover is done, so these finishing touches will give similar listings a run for their money. Day beds are a really great alternative to pull out sofas because they're cheaper, they're more comfortable, and they give a room a good dual function. It could be a sitting room or a bedroom. Don't forget to decorate porches and decks, especially one like this, which is at the front of the house. A few potted plants, some patio furniture will really spruce up the space and packs a big visual punch for very little money. Old world crocheted and lace tablecloths might be your style, but to buyers, they can indicate a house that hasn't been renovated in a generation. So either don't use one at all and show off the wood, or if you are going to use a table covering, keep it modern. Now that the Rocha's house is like new, will buyers want to pay full price? This family home felt dark, overcrowded and stuffy. But by paring down the furniture and changing the colour scheme, it feels warm and inviting. The minute buyers opened the door, they found it hard to see through the family's personal taste. We've changed that perception by scaling down the furniture and adding some slip covers and installing new curtains and matching accessories. Trendy paint and an eye-catching storage unit puts potential back into this house. In the dining room, there was more of the same clutter. After removing the knickknacks, repainting, exposing the dining room table and adding a modern light fixture, we've given buyers a fantastic idea of what they can do if this is their space. Bathrooms sell homes and buyers weren't prepared to pay full asking price with this one. After a good scrub, a new shower curtain, grout and a new ceiling light, buyers are sure to take a second look. In the master bedroom, large furniture and blocked access to the outside made the room a wasted selling opportunity. So it's now a study. A new day bed and desk, modern wall hangings and a contemporary rug make this room a desired communal space for the modern family. The balcony is a huge selling feature, but wasn't marketed properly. Flowers and chic furniture make this space a luxurious outdoor retreat, adding much needed value to the home. The Rocha's house has been modernized and is much closer to what buyers expect for the $679,000 price tag. Decluttering, neutralizing, letting the light in and changing room function make it easier for a professional family to mentally move in. Setting your asking price is critical. 
Your house is not worth what you think it's worth, but what the market will bear. Go too high and you won't sell your home, and lowering the price later on will just lose time and momentum. Make sure the photographs in your property listing reflect what your house actually looks like. There is nothing worse for buyers than seeing one thing before they come and being met with a very different reality. It also makes buyers wonder what other deceptions you've got hidden up your sleeve. Open houses sell houses. About one in five listings is sold at an open house. You might not like them, but they are effective. This home has gone through a dramatic transformation. Now, what would the family think? Wow. It's beautiful. Look at the room. So nice. I'm amazed of the whole transformation, and I believe that my wedding can start happening as well and start planning for it. So Mike thinks his wedding is a sure thing, but is Agent Maria certain of a sale? Hello, Maria. Wow. <laughs> what a difference. Come on through. Wow. So is this a product you can believe in now and you can sell? The product, it's sellable uh -huh. as long as the price, it's adjustable. Wow. <laughs> What a difference. Uh -huh. This is a very nice sitting room now. Mm. That's beautiful again. What are your favorite transformations? The living room, because it's the first thing that I saw, yeah. and I saw a big difference. And beautiful. you know, as a real estate agent, how important first impressions are. Definitely. And that's probably why he impressed me so much. Yeah. So if we can get the price down, I think we've got a chance. I think so, too. Fantastic. Maria is sold. Next up, potential buyers. Hi. I'm Sophie. Nice to hey, meet Zelda. you. Nice meeting you. Hi. Hi. Have you been to the house before? Yes. Yes, we have. And this looks much different. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts when you left the house last time? Too busy, too full. What we thought is we'd make it into an occasional bedroom study, because you do have already four bedrooms in this house. Right. Yeah. That's very nice, yeah. More useful. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. get used to this one here. What do you think of the price? I think it's still a little high. So you think with maybe some movement on the price, this could be a house you might put on your shortlist? Yes, it is. This urban detached home has gone from old world to contemporary. And now the desire to sell and move on to realize their dreams is well within their grasp. Just after the unsellables team left, the Rocha family lowered their price to $599,000. Their house was sold a few days later at the full asking price. They say there's a buyer for every house and that every house has a buyer, but location, price, decor all play a role. My job is to highlight the best assets of houses that just can't find a buyer and to turn these unsellables into surefire hits. This bungalow is listed at $539,000. It's 1,900 square feet, has four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a basement apartment. It's been on the market for an unbelievable 12 months with two different agents. There have been five offers, but the owners, who are two sisters, are holding out for more, even though this location on such a busy road might be the reason this sale has stalled. Esther has been loving her home for 19 years. Her sister, Libertad, moved in five years ago. They've decided to move into a condo and travel. I would like to sell this house really quickly so I can go and visit my mother in Mexico. I want to have more free time for myself. Before putting their house up for sale, they spent $90,000 on renovations. New windows all over the house. We renewed this bathroom. We stuck on the house, the garden. Beautiful now. They listed the house for five hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. There were no offers. No, nothing. nothing. Zero. Then they took a bit of a gamble. They switched agents and dropped the price to four hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. That price is very low. So they decided to raise it again to five hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars. The roller coaster pricing has done nothing for a sale. The location hasn't helped either. Many people don't like uh, the busy street. I, I would say that is the thing, the busy street. Esther and Libertad's house sits on a four-lane thoroughfare, but it is on the edge of a very affluent neighborhood about 20 minutes north of downtown. 
High-end shops, public transport and playgrounds make this an ideal neighbourhood for families and young professionals with healthy paychecks. Houses on side streets sell in a week for $700,000 and up. Older bungalows are torn down to make way for luxury homes. At $539,000, this house seems to be priced right, even with all this traffic. Now, I can't fix the road, but let's look inside and see if the house is worth the traffic jam. Really nice, big, bright sitting room. And I can't hear any traffic noise. I understand they're trying to block out the traffic, which is good marketing ploy, but there are more attractive ways of doing it than vertical blinds. The furniture is all at shin level. Shin? Shin. This really beautiful fireplace. It's obviously the focal point of the room, but I'm not seeing it because there's all this clutter and it seems to be mainly owl-based. You want people to appreciate the room and not your porcelain. Ah, nice sized dining room, well positioned between the sitting room and the kitchen. And look, this is brilliant. The owners have hung mirrors on the wall and that's a great way of making smaller room feel bigger. But then they've undone all their good work by filling this room. There's a parrot cage, a ginormous cabinet, more owls. All this unnecessary clutter makes the room feel smaller. Two words, small and dowdy. Old appliances, old cabinets, old countertop, old tiles. Now, kitchens and bathrooms are really important when you sell. You don't need to spend a huge amount of money on them, but if you have a small galley kitchen like this one, at least make it sleek and sexy. Recently renovated bathroom, nice. And there are two decent sized bedrooms as well as two in the basement. I'm going to go and check out the backyard. What a great yard. And it feels a kind of a bit dull. But it almost feels like they've run out of steam. They've got this strange concrete pathway, so the table really should be there rather than here. We could really do with some colour, maybe some plants or some flowers, because a well-landscaped garden does add value to a property. And especially with the road out front, you want something quite nice and tranquil out back. This house is on a major road and is aggressively priced. That means if this place is going to sell, the inside has to knock your socks off. And it doesn't. The dining room and sitting room are cluttered, and the renovation didn't include the kitchen, which is one of the most important rooms of the house. It's not surprising that this house is still unsold. If Esther and Libidad want to get the full asking price, they need to listen to my advice. Tell me a bit about the house. It's been on the market for a year, and it won't take any less than 539. No, no. Not at all. OK. But there are some obvious problems, and the road is a big problem. So do you think the price reflects the location? Oh, for sure it does. Yeah. Yes. If you check the prices on the other streets, yeah, absolutely, or, they're, they're, they're much that's higher. That makes a difference. So you could say that maybe someone who wouldn't usually be able to afford to live in this neighbourhood can live here. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is, if you can persuade people to do the viewings during a quieter part of the day, like Sundays, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably not a bad thing. No, we no. never thought about that, but thanks that's for it. the tip. <laughs> now, the living room, it's a nice big size living room and I love the fireplace. But at the moment, I'm kind of distracted by all the owls. 99. 99? <laughs> Sometimes it's easier for buyers to see a house without so much of your personality in it. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can put the owls to roost for a little bit. Sure, no problem. Tell me about the bird cage in the dining room. That one is like a hotel for my daughter's birds. And we haven't had the heart to tell her, OK, that has to go. If we take it out, there'll be more space in there. Yes. Yeah, right. Now, when you spent your $90,000 on the renovation, did you consider renovating the kitchen? We, just, we thought that it was better to invest in what we did. The kitchen definitely needs attention. A lot. Yeah, but, a lot. <laughs> but then we had no more money. At the moment, it's small and a bit old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. 
And we can't do anything about the size, <laughs> but at least we can make it look sleek and modern. That would be nice. Which would be yeah. good. Yeah. What are your thoughts about the garden? Quite simple. Selling your house is all about maximising what you've got and making it look as good as possible. So what we need to do is, I think, modernise inside a bit. Yes. A bit more young professionals. Yes. Well, we're going to get you into a condo. We better take the plunge. Ready? Yes. <laughs> yes. Esther and Liebedad have been trying to sell their house for a whole year now with no luck. Their new agent, Ray, signed on six weeks ago and he's agreed to reduce the rate of commission. The reason why? He gets to put his sign on this very busy road, which he thinks is good advertising. But I need to speak to him to see if it's in his new client's best interest. Ray, explain to me your commission structure. A home uh, commission rate will be between 5 and 6 percent with uh -huh. the buying agent and the listing agent splitting that. Right. In this situation, I've worked out an agreement to take a reduced rate just, just on the selling side. And it must be great for you having your board on this road. Yes, it is. It's a neighbourhood I would like to grow my business in. How do you sell a house like this on a busy road? I think you should concentrate on the positives. Uh, you can sit back here, it's got a great size backyard. Once you're in the house, you don't really notice the noise. The windows have been updated, so any noise has been filtered out. This house has been on the market almost a year. It's gone from 579 to 479 to 539. How many viewings have you had? There's been over 60 uh, viewings uh, with real estates going through, as well as uh, my own clients. Now, apart from the price, what problems do you see the house having? The feedback has been the kitchen needs total renovation. Mm -hmm. The home could use an update in decor, furniture. Who's the sort of target market in this area? Young professionals uh, who want to live close to uh, the shops. If the house was on the side streets or the streets behind, they would be priced out of the market. If this bungalow was located just one or two streets north or south of here, the minimum price would fetch upward of 700000 Now, how are you going about targeting the young professionals? The best marketing strategy anyone can use is getting their home listed on MLS. Yeah. Uh, for all my clients, I use a professional real estate photographer, yeah. as well as uh, I do a floor plan. Once we have made the house more modern and sleek, so it will appeal to a young professional, do you think we've got a good chance of selling the house? Sales are really taking off. Yeah. And the inventory is cleared in this neighbourhood, and at that price, I think this house will go as well. I'm going to show Esther and Libertad what sells quickly in their neighbourhood. This house nearby on a quieter side street sold in just 18 days for 97% of the asking price. Come on in, guys. What do you notice first in this room? Ah, oh, the chimney. The chimney, yeah. That's the focal point in the room, mm -hmm. and you see it. Mm -hmm. Now, I prefer your fireplace, but when I walked into your room, I didn't see it. I was looking at all the owls and the sculptures. It's too busy. Busy. Yeah, busy. it's too busy. Yeah. Whereas this is quite plain. You see it, it's a focal point. And also, look to the ground, ladies. The wood floors really shine. The floors are nice. You've got a beautiful floor, so we need to show people that. Selling your house is all about letting people see all the great things your house has to offer. But anyway, come through to the dining room. Now, what is missing in this room that you have in your dining room? A ginormous parrot cage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem with your dining room at the moment is there's quite a lot going on. They've just toned down the clutter. They've got a dining room table, a side table. Yeah, for the space, you don't need much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to imagine your own furniture in this space, because there's not so much going on. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to like the kitchen, so follow me. Oh, this is That's a nice. nice kitchen, eh? It better than ours. <laughs> it's, at the moment, it's better than yours. But look, it's exactly the same size. It's a small galley kitchen. Just shows that with a new countertop, nice new looking tiles, it changes the whole thing. I know people like decluttered houses where they can see all the features, because this house sold in 18 days for 97% of the asking price. Good. Yeah. So we need to go back and get rid of the owls. <laughs> do you think you can do that? And the cage. And the cage, <laughs> come on. We can put the owls in the cage and carry them out the door. Let's do it. 
To get that much needed sale, our general contractor, Anthony Sayers, is here to help. Esther, this house is solidly built, well proportioned, and you've done some renovations, but we can definitely do better. Okay. Now, first things first, I love this fireplace, but the marble tiles have seen better days. So how would you feel about replacing it with a newer tile? Yeah, that would be okay. Okay. Is that going to be a difficult job? No, it shouldn't be very difficult at all. It'll make it more of a focal point for sure. Now, the kitchen, you admitted that's the least smart part of the house. In terms of selling, it's also the one of the most important rooms in the house. So we really need to get that up to grey. All right. right. Now, what I'd like to do is remove the countertop, replace it with a newer one, and also replace the tiles. How about we just paint out the tiles? That might be a more fun project than actually Watch changing. Me. Do you like the idea yes, of that? Yes, of course. Then in the rest of the house, we're going to finish it off by decluttering, adding new window treatments, modern accessories. It's going to have a facelift. Basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we can get it sold. So are you prepared to roll up your sleeves and help us? For sure. For sure. OK, come on, then. OK. When selling your house, don't underestimate the discerning buyer. In upscale neighbourhoods, it's crucial that principal rooms are shown to their full potential. And how is Esther taking the changes so far? Yeah, I'm going to miss the house. But it has to be done. It's for, for my parents to spend time with them. It's for a good reason. Esther and Libertad's house has been languishing on the market for a whole year. With 60 viewings and five rejected offers, their move to Mexico has been postponed. We've only got three days before the open house, so we're starting in the kitchen. Anthony, what is the secret to tile painting? Uh, well, there's a couple secrets, actually. Ooh. The first one is to clean the surface that you're going to work on. Right. Which is what I'm doing now. Okay. I'm using like a heavy duty cleaner degreaser. Right. To just lift whatever grease is on the tiles off. So the primer sticks to it, otherwise it would just slide off. Yes. And then take sandpaper. Yeah. Like a medium grit. Okay. And just rough, rough up the, the tiles. That will help the primer bond to the tiles. And is the primer a special primer? The primer is a high bonding primer. If you put this on, mm -hmm. pretty much anything will stick to it. And then we're going to use a special paint that is moisture resistant. OK, because obviously there's always water in the kitchen. Yes. Brilliant. An inexpensive way to modernise a kitchen is to give everything a fresh coat of paint. Once the painting's done, the old countertop can be removed and the new one installed. Meanwhile, we're doing something about those low sofas. We're propping them up with wooden platforms. Esther, do you know what these are? Uh, I was guessing the basis of the sofa. Absolutely, because your sofa's quite small at the moment. Did it have legs at one point and you just decided to get rid of them, or...? They did, and I threw them out. I just liked it that way. Low, low and modern. Low and modern. 30 years ago. They're really nice sofas, and they're going to look fab with their bases. That's right. In the living room, improving the focal point is key. This looks quite complicated. What are we doing here? Remember the nasty-looking stone that was yeah. here? I just took it off and built a uh, solid base. It's uh -huh. level now. Right. So I'm just dry fitting the tiles to fit, making uh -huh. sure everything lines up. This isn't a marble tile. What is it? It's a porcelain tile. Are you using a special type of glue? Just the thin set mortar. We're just going to uh, set the base first, yep. and then we'll do the same at the top, set all the tops too. And how long is it going to take to set? We should leave it a full day to dry. So we'll be done for the open house? Of course. OK, brilliant. Well, I will leave you to it. OK, excellent. With the transformation almost complete, young professionals will love these finishing touches. I've got rid of all the vertical blinds and replaced them with these drapes. They're so much nicer, they're cosier, they're warmer. If you've got beautiful hardwood floors, don't cover them up with a huge rug. A small rug like this will still help to find the seating area, but you're showing off your floors. End of season sales are a great place to pick up larger garden furniture. Cheap prices are guaranteed because the retailers want to get rid of all their summer stock. Esther and Libertad's house finally looks like it's worth $539,000. But will buyers think so? This house used to be dowdy and cluttered. 
but now it's all dressed up and ready to go to market. The living room had good bones, but the clutter hid all the selling features. A neutral coat of paint and new curtains give a modern, warm feel. The newly raised sofas, the exposed hardwood, and the updated fireplace let buyers take in the great surroundings. The dining room was equally busy and dated. We painted crisp, clean color on the walls, added new drapes, chic frames on the mirrors, and a contemporary light. This space radiates a luxurious atmosphere buyers aspire to. Esther and Libertad's dowdy kitchen was not what buyers would expect for the asking price. Now it is. We've painted over the old tiles and completely covered the 1980s cabinets. With a brand new countertop and cute finishing touches, this kitchen is no longer a turn-off for the high-end buyer. Unfortunately, the backyard wasn't the refuge it should have been. We've changed that by planting beautiful fresh flowers in sheet pots, strategically placed by a led to the oasis of calm at the end of the yard, a perfect haven of tranquility. Esther and Libertad's house was an underachiever at best, depersonalizing each room, updating the kitchen, and maximizing space to appeal to a high-end market makes the price tag easier to swallow. Pick your asking price carefully, then stick to it. Lowering it and raising it again can make buyers think you're greedy, and that is not going to earn you a sale. The old adage, location, 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 is correct. But don't assume every house in the same neighborhood is of equal value. If your house is on the busiest block in the neighborhood, then that has to be reflected in the asking price. Don't overlook outside space. Putting in a deck or some nice patio furniture effectively adds square footage to your living space. Instant appeal. So what will Esther and Libertad think? Ooh, and I thought oh, I knew how to decorate. What a change. Now with we'll the sofas, it. now they're going to be more sure. comfortable. Very nice. I love it. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Very good taste. It's amazing. I'm happy. Now that I see it so beautifully done, I think that it's going to be sold soon. If I can spend six months in Mexico, it would be amazing. And will their agent, Ray, see an offer in the works? Amazing. Definitely like what you did with the fireplace. It's now the focal point of the room. Mm -hmm. New and improved dining room? No, it looks like a dining room. We took down the vertical blinds. I think having drapes feels much more cosy. Yes, it softened the room very yeah. much. Just changing the countertop made it look so much sharper. You can definitely see uh, family enjoying themselves back here. The bones of the house were great, but it just didn't show its potential. No. It's been modernized, it's in a great area, and at a price I think is very fair. The agent is pleased, but will potential buyers be just as happy? Good size? Yes. yes. Good size. Mm -hmm. Just a bit, yeah. For the price range, yeah. This is the most that I've liked. Yeah. Is this the sort of setup you're looking for? Sitting room, dining room? Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. A dining table. Yeah, it will fit perfectly. Yes. Here. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. It is nice, isn't it? Yes. It's beautiful. Is this a property you could think about for coming back for a second viewing? Yes, definitely. And what do you think of the price? Yeah, we would make an offer. Yeah. Yeah. Lesson learned, you may not be able to change the location of a house, but we've highlighted its best assets, and I think soon it's going to be stopping traffic. After the unsellables team left, Esther and Libertad got an offer just under the asking price. They're holding out for a little bit more. When selling your house, it is essential to showcase your property's best features if you want a quick sale. Now, this can be more difficult in older homes that have been buried under the cloak of time. My mission is to help homeowners unlock the potential in their homes to ensure that sale. This grand Victorian semi is one of those unique homes that very rarely comes onto the market in this neighbourhood. It's 3,000 square feet, has five bedrooms, two bathrooms and parking for five cars. It's listed at $699,000 and has been on the market for five long months. 
Homeowner George, he's getting anxious. He's a photographer. He wants to travel the world and he can't understand why the world is not beating down his door to buy this house. Homeowner George has been living in this house for 30 years. He inherited it from his mother. I've sort of grown, grown up in this house, uh, really, basically, and uh, I have tremendous feelings about selling it. George is an artist at heart with a wandering spirit. He wants to start a new chapter in his life. Well, I would like to sell this place as quickly as possible so I can explore South America and take photographs for an exhibition in the future. George has a real stubborn streak. Not only does he refuse to have open houses, but he actually turned down six offers already, which he felt were all too low. I have no interest in lowering the price. Where in a downtown core do you get a, a house that's 27-foot lot with parking for four or five cars? He doesn't get why it hasn't sold at the full asking price. Maybe people don't have the imagination to live in a large Victorian house. George's house sits in a very multicultural neighborhood only blocks from downtown. Previously a working class area, professional families have turned it into an expensive pocket of real estate. Houses like George's sell in days for more than $715,000. At $699,000, on paper it sounds right, so what's wrong? We have got an amazing location and I cannot wait to peel back the layers, find out why this house isn't selling. The colours don't give the best first impression to buyers. This house stands out like a sore thumb. Blue and gold is very intense and it might not be everyone's cup of tea. Wow, you have huge hallways, original mouldings and banister and hardwood floors. I love it. I do not love the smell of smoke, though. That really puts potential buyers off. It's such a shame. This could be the most fantastic room. Beautiful period details. You've got the original fireplace, hardwood floors. But this reception room isn't sumptuous enough for a house in this price range. This room really lacks function. This should be a really cosy family room, sitting room. Wow, fab sized dining room. From the old into the new. It's great that they've got a new kitchen. It's nice and bright. It's very clean and decluttered. This is the master bedroom and a masterclass on how not to present a room. You've got a stained mattress on the floor. The walls are in bad shape. I mean, look at this. This should be a reading nook, a tiny little sitting room, something useful and attractive. This house should be a Victorian gem in the heart of the city that people are falling over themselves to buy, but the asking price is too high for the state the house is in. People expect better room function, a higher standard of finishing and more upgrades. They need to be wowed. Instead, it smells of smoke. And these colours are just driving buyers away. And that is why it's unsellable. To get George down to South America faster, he needs to hear the truth. First of all, George, this is an absolute corker of a house. I love it. But we start outside. Did you choose the colours? Yes, I did, yeah. Well, actually, when, when I painted it, they said it was a very bold colour in the neighbourhood. <laughs> I bet they did. <laughs> they, said, they said to go with the person that owned the house. Right, yeah. <laughs> and you're obviously quite a charismatic bit of a character, George. Yeah. Um, but I think the outside needs to be toned down just to touch. Fair enough. The problem is, is a lot of potential buyers get very nervous about the idea of painting exteriors. They don't have a lot of experience with it. So what I'd like to do is paint it a more neutral colour. Yeah, fine. The interior, the nicotine stain neck curtains. How many a day do you smoke, George? Far too many. <laughs> well, I know what we need to do. First of all, we need to smoke outside from now on. And the smell of smoke is not really a great selling point, is it? No. Now, George, do you use the sitting room, really? No. No. I'd like to give that room back its function so it feels like it gets used your bedroom. <laughs> it's not exactly saying buy me at the moment, is it? No. 
And the thing is, you've got that great little side room. What do you use that side room for? Uh, <laughs> we can <laughs> do the laundry in there. I'd like to make it into something a bit more attractive, a bit more useful, like a reading nook. What people are looking for in a master bedroom, they're looking for a bit of a retreat. Fair enough. Now, it's been on the market for five months. Do you think the price might have affected its saleability? You yeah. know, you have parking, you have an enormous lot mm, yeah. in the downtown area. I don't think it's overpriced. It is slightly overpriced in this condition, but that's why we're here. But you have to take the plunge and help me turn this house around. Yeah, I, I will do. Good. George's Semi has character, history, good bones, and is in a fabulous location. But after five months on the market and 88 viewings, this classic beauty is no closer to getting a suitor, not a buyer in sight. Now, I'm wondering whether the price tag of $699,000 might be part of the problem. So I'm going to go and have a chat with Sheila, George's real estate agent, find out why she thinks this house isn't selling. 699, Sheila. Seems like quite a lot to me. Is that a bit high or on the money? When we took the listing, George was quite insistent on a 699. Okay. I, as a real estate agent, you know, you've got to get to a stage, you know, five months, 88 viewings. Yes. So is there a point where you are going to say, George, I believe in your house, but at 699, I can't sell it? George has said, said to me, Sheila, now you won't bully me to reduce the price. A typical man, they hate being bullied. <laughs> hate it. And I said, no, George. I won't. OK. I think I must be a wussy or a whatever. I don't like to, to be that aggressive with yeah. them. What is the feedback you've had from viewers? Um, people have complained about the cigarettes. Um, I um, did ask him would he remove the shears and he sort of snapped at me and, and, and I kind of laughed, so I had to let that go. Because he thinks that people should be able to see past that. But in, oh, in, in... If I had a dollar for every time someone said that to me, I would be incredibly rich. So have you given him this feedback? Yes, he knows. I mean, I've followed up on, on showings and, mm. and he knows. Open houses, have you had open houses? No public open no houses. No public open houses. He did not want people crawling through his house. So at the moment, the marketing is for sale sign and MLS. Now, what are you going to do once we have transformed the inside of the house? Well, we're going to have it re-photographed. Yep. And there will be a new for sale sign go up. And you're going to come back from the open house. I am. Bring some buyers with you. It appears George is too stubborn and perhaps his agent a bit too nice. So I'm taking George to a comparable house that sold in eight days for an amazing $45,000 over asking. George, I brought you here because this is a comparable house. It blends in with the neighbourhood. Well, I think it looks very nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I like uh, the colour. And more importantly, no one is going to be put off by the exterior. Anyway, come on in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, it's uh, a little smaller than my house. It is considerably smaller than your house. What I like about this room is it is immaculate. They've used a really nice colour. It makes the room feel big and bright and well-maintained. I agree totally with you on that. Oh, that's good. The fact is, bright, up-to-date sells. Yeah, I can, I can un well understand that. Got a beautiful bed, matching linen. It's all about creating an atmosphere. My idea of the bedroom is a sort of secondary thing. About... But you shouldn't treat it like that when you're selling it. Yes, I understand that. You understand that. Now, do you want to know how quickly this house sold, George? Oh, yes, that would be nice. Eight days. Oh, that's pretty quick, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to know how much above asking? Yes. Six percent. Oh. So, this should be making you smile. Do you know why? Yeah. Because your house is bigger, it's better, it's got more character, and it's going to look fantastic. Oh, let's hope so. I think it will. Oh, Come <laughs> on, then. We've got work to do. <laughs> Anthony says our general contractor is going to make George's house shine. I was telling George earlier how... I've kind of fallen in love with this house, yep. but it does need some serious TLC to get it up to the standard that I think buyers are looking for. And we need to start outside. The crazy blue and gold. We need to paint both brick and wood outside. Okay. Now, the next area I think that we really need to pay attention to is the bedroom. 
Yeah. Just not looking at its best, is it, George? No, it isn't. No. <laughs> now, the walls look a little tatty. What are we going to do with them? Well, I have this fabulous new product, right, mm -hmm. that you actually put on the wall, and it just helps smooth the wall out. It's a wallpaper that you put on the wall and, and you paint over it. Yes. And once the wall is really smooth, we're going to make that a really interesting reading room off the side of your master bedroom. Yeah, that's, that sounds fine. On the main floor, we need a fresh coat of paint everywhere. All I see is buckets and buckets of paint, and it's going to be quite a challenge. But once we do it, it's going to look absolutely yes, fantastic. This is an incredible house. Yeah. So are you ready to do some work, George? Yes, I am. Come on, then. Excellent. With this type of house at this price point, room presentation is key. Throwing away outdated articles is a sure way of indicating the house hasn't been left neglected in other areas. Resting on your laurels just because your house is one of a kind doesn't get a sale. Revealed surfaces that are clean and decluttered win over today's picky buyer. The makeover's barely begun and already George senses a change in the air. George's house has been on the market for a whopping five months. He refuses to have open houses, but there have been a remarkable 88 showings. So his South American dream is still on hold. We've only got three days before the open house. First, we're tackling the exterior with a new paint job. It's not as intimidating as you might think and can make a huge difference to curb appeal. Someone told me you needed a drop cloth, which is exciting because it means you're painting the house. Yes, thank you. How are we going to make it pretty? Um, well, first thing is that we need to neutralize this blue. You mean paint it another colour? Yes. When you do an outdoor painting, I would say 50% of it would be prep work. Right. So scraping any loose paint, cleaning the surface, just preparing it so that the paint will adhere to mm -hmm. the surface, OK? George has already power washed all the brick for us. Go, George. Yeah. So we're going to need one coat, two coats? If it's a good paint and you prepare the surface properly, you could probably get away with one coat. Not only does the outside need to stand up to the competition, but so does the inside. In the living room, we're highlighting the unique historic features of the home with a fresh coat of sage-coloured paint. And we're achieving a whole new look in the dressing room. Here, old walls aren't so desirable, but we have a solution. Now, this magic wallpaper looks like regular wallpaper to me. OK, but if you look at the actual wall, uh -huh. right, you see how rough the wall is? Yep. Right? I've already done some wallpapering. And you see how fantabulous it looks? It's very smooth. Yeah. If you have a wall that's damaged or in rough shape, it's a great way to hide all the deficiencies in the wall, for sure. I do quite like the embossed wallpaper on one wall like this, because it yeah. creates a kind of accent wall. Yes. And the best thing is, wallpaper is really in vogue at the moment. That's right. So this magic wallpaper, you put it on, and you can paint it any colour mm. under the rainbow. Exactly. We want to upgrade the kitchen a little bit, so the best and simplest, easiest way is to just upgrade the hardware. This is the old hardware, they're just knobs, so I'm just going to simply remove them. And what I want to do is, I don't want to drill new, two new holes, I just want to drill one new hole. So this is the hardware that we've chosen for these doors, and what I've done is I've made up a jig. I've just taken the handle and made the same holes on this piece of wood. It's gonna be pretty repetitive. I've got about 10 of these to do. So all this is gonna do is just help it go a lot easier and faster. And it's just gonna make sure that all my handles are lined up the exact same spot on each door. I'm gonna take my drill now and I'm gonna place it into the hole and I'm just gonna drill it out. Nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the second screw and I'm going to use just this hand screwdriver just to tighten it up. Just like that. It's beautiful. Finally, the wallpaper is ready to be painted. Ah, oh, George, they put you to work. Ah, oh, yes, they have, yeah. I've painted the wall. The whole house just feels fresher and brighter. Already it smells less of smoke because we painted it. Yeah. And that's the best thing to do. 
You've got a house that has any lingering smells. Paint just gets rid of them. It's amazing. Yeah. I think this is going to be quite a long job, George. Oh, yes, you might I... need some liquid sustenance. <laughs> yes, probably an awful lot of it afterwards. With the work almost complete inside and a little freshening up of the garden outside, we'll have George's house looking like the grand Victorian it should be. Make sure you've replaced all the spent bulbs and given the body of the chandelier a wipe down with a wet cloth. And then all these prisms refract the light. Looks really glitzy and glamorous. These stick-on dragonfly accents are a great way of drawing attention to the focal point in the room, which in this case is the bed. They're brilliant because they help hide the bumps and imperfections in this wall. Hanging pictures at the wrong height is a really common mistake. They should be at eye level. Now, a good rule of thumb when hanging is 60 inches from the floor to the middle of the art. And that brings the focal point of the picture to the eye level of most people, and you don't have to be craning your neck to see the art. With all the changes done, will the transformation finally get George a price he thinks his house deserves? I'm in love. This place is dressed up and ready for the ball. First impressions are lasting impressions. The exterior of George's Victorian turned the urban professional off. However, a lick of neighbourhood-friendly paint has changed all that. In the living room, the period features were overshadowed by a bland decor and zero wow factor. Now the fireplace is the focal point. The wall colour is modern, updated fabric covers the old furniture, dramatic window treatments let the light in. Now it's a grand reception room that buyers expect from a Victorian. The parlour suffered from the same lack of care. But fresh paint, classic wing-back chairs that we bought used and slip-covered and new blinds have maximised space and created a chic alternative retreat. George forgot about female buyers in the master bedroom. So we brought in a new bed frame and a headboard we found in the garage. We added fresh paint, decorative accessories and linens and cleaned the drapes to get rid of the smoky smell. The room now has a fresh appeal. The Victorian dressing room was a wasted opportunity. Now classic wallpaper covers imperfections, new paint is in keeping with the period and furniture adds function. For $699,000, high-end buyers will look for a home office. Classic high-end touches have now elevated George's semi back to where it should be. His beloved Victorian has finally achieved the splendour potential buyers look for in a period home. Know when to lower your asking price. In the end, your home is only worth as much as someone is prepared to pay for it. If it's unrealistically priced, it might end up on the dustbin of listings and stay there. If your home is painted an outrageous colour on the exterior, it's going to put off a lot of buyers. Generally, people want their house to blend into the neighbourhood, not stick out like a potential eyesore. If your house is over 100 years old, play up its historical assets, but try and give it a modern flair. Your home should act its age, but not be dated, because most people don't want to feel like they're living in a museum. So will George actually recognise his own home? Wow. Yeah, I like those. Oh, I see Sophie's feminine touch in here. Oh, beautiful room. Sophie and her team did a lovely job. I'm so grateful to them. But after such a long time on the market, will the changes regain buyer's interest? So what do you think of the outside of the house? Looks very nice. Oh, it's really nice room. It looks great. Yeah, it yeah. does. You can move into this house without sure. doing anything to it. Mm -hmm. Come on in. It's, it's a good use of space. Yeah. Oh, isn't this interesting? Well, this nice extra doors. addition room makes it very charming. Mm, it very does. Very charming. Is this a kind of house you consider coming back for a second look? Yes, I would definitely consider coming back. And real estate agent Sheila is just as impressed. I feel like there should be a drum roll. OK. Wow. How much easier does the transformation make for you in terms of selling it? Basically, you actually become actually proud of the house. Yeah. Like, you don't feel that you're talking from a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Beca because of, you know, just the way it showed. This period piece is now a hit. We've taken this house from dreary to dashing. It holds its own in the neighbourhood and lives up to its past. Just days after the Unsellables team left, George received an offer for 92% of the asking price. But once again, he turned it down. However, this house definitely has more buyer interest. The seller is not quite ready to part with it yet. Look at those blinds. Doesn't this look great? Oh, look at the couches and the table and the carpet. Wow, the walls look so much different. Lovely. Oh, nice little desk here. Oh, wow. Mat down the middle looks lovely. I see what she was guessing at. Very interesting, huh? Lovely. Oh, the headboard turned out really well. 